Welcome back to part 6 of this tutorial series. In this part we're going to be looking at embeddings. What is an embedding? Without getting into algorithmic arithmetic, an embedding is basically a numerical vector representation of text that makes no sense to us but makes sense to the computer and allows it to compare the similarity in meaning of certain words and pieces of text. So these are a bunch of vectors. This is actually an embedding, but it doesn't make any sense to us. It's just a lot of numbers as far as we are concerned. But these represent the similarity in meaning of certain words. And what makes this so exciting is that it does not literally compare the words, but rather the meaning of the words. For example, if we were to compare the words happy and contented, it would not compare the words themselves because the letters are completely different, but rather it compares the meaning of the words. This is because the words happy and contented are very similar in meaning, but not in spelling. So these have high similarity as far as embeddings are concerned. And if we have happy and hapless, which actually means unfortunate, so almost the opposite, these will have a low similarity, even though the words in spelling are pretty similar. It compares the meaning and not the similarity. This is what makes embedding so powerful. It allows us to compare or search by similarity or meaning, even if the words used are completely different. So imagine having a large document and you need to find a particular quote or passage, but you only half remember the exact words used. You can totally just do a similarity search using embeddings. As long as you input something with similar meaning, you'll be able to easily find the passage you need, even if you don't remember the exact wording. The uses for this are really endless in many different and clever ways, so we'll be exploring a couple of possible uses in the last two parts of this tutorial series. Before we get started, we'll need something to search in. So for this first part, we'll be using a list of quotes from famous people throughout time. There are about 250 quotes in the list. I've provided the list as a separate text file with this tutorial, but if for some reason it's not available or you can't find it, you can scroll all the way to the bottom of the written tutorial and just copy the quotes from there. You paste them into a new file called fxquotes.txt and make sure this file is in your base directory. Now, if you read through the quotes file, you'll notice they all have their authors and sometimes extra information attached. As we only want to compare the meaning of the quotes themselves and not any extra information that's tagged on, let's have a bit of fun. This is not technically required, but it's quite easy to do and for tutorial purposes it will be very easy to show visually what is going on. So we'll be writing the quotes to a separate Python file as a list of lists and each first entry in each list will have the actual quote and the second entry will have the author and whatever extra information is provided. First, create a file in your base directory named fa write quotes to list.py. Now open the file and add the following code. First, we create an empty list called quotes. Then, with open fxquotes.txt, our file containing the quotes, in read mode as file. We're going to have quotes. This is file.read.split on a new line. In case you don't know what a new line is, it's just the hidden enter character, which just means you're going over to the next line and the next line and the next line. That's just the hidden new line character. So it's going to split every single line each time you see a new number, it's going to split those all to a separate entry in this list called quotes. Then with open fxquotes.py, a file that doesn't actually exist, but it doesn't matter, it will, it will be created automatically. In write mode as file, 
we're going to do file.write. First, we're going to write quotes equals and then an opening bracket. So here we're just starting our variable name for the list. Then we do a new line just to go over to a new line in our file. And for every quote in this quotes list, we're going to split the quote on the slash but we're only going to do this once because some of the quotes will potentially have multiple of these slashes in there with also with a date or whatever the, the book the quote is from or something like this. So we're only going to split every single quote line once maximum. So this will be stored in a list called quote, which has in position one the quote and in position two or index one and index zero the actual extra information. Then we're going to write this single quote list to the file, followed by a new line character again. And we're of course going to have the comma because we're inside of an outer list called quotes. Then at the end, we're going to write the closing bracket to our file and it will be closed automatically because we're using this with open context manager. So if we run this file, we'll see fxquotes.py has appeared, which is a list of lists. And it has the quote in the first index or index zero and then the author in the second index, which is fantastic, exactly what we wanted. Now we have a separate list of lists with the quote in index zero and the author in index one. We'll need to generate a separate embedding for every single quote in the list and store them somewhere. Once we have done so, we can compare them to any piece of text we enter to find similar entries. If this seems confusing, don't worry, we'll be showing exactly how the process works. But before we start generating lots of embeddings for all our quotes, let's actually look at how to generate an embedding in the first place and exactly what an embedding is and looks like. Create a new file in your root tutorial directory called FB getting an embedding.py. Again, the city alphabetic naming is just to keep the files in a nice order so you can easily find anything if you want to reference these tutorial code files later on. Now open the file and let's start with our imports up top. We'll go back to the basics for a moment, getting rid of our simplified GPT calling utility as we'll be using a different model. We'll be using the text embedding ADA002 model as it's specifically designed for generating embeddings. We import OpenAI as the embeddings endpoint is also an OpenAI API just like ChatGPT. We import the config function and set our OpenAI API key as we did for the previous parts because embeddings use the same API key as normal ChatGPT so we can just use our same key. We then set the embedding model variable to the model we just discussed. Now we'll create a simple call function. This is fairly self-explanatory and similar to normal ChatGPT calls, except we use a openai.embedding.create instead of chatcompletion.create. It takes a model and an input text and we pass in the model we defined in our variable and quote input that our function takes. Finally, we add a call to this function below the function block, which will embed the text. Please embed this sentence for me and print the result. Now let's go ahead and generate our first embedding. Go ahead and run this file and you should see a massive list of numbers representing vectors about 1500 lines just for this simple short sentence while this doesn't make visual sense to us this is the magic that will allow the computer to compare the similarity between different text vectors and thereby the similarity between the text themselves the computer will not be comparing text but the text's vectors with each other 
This means that we will need to generate a vector for every quote in our list and store them in some type of database. If we don't save the embeddings, we'd have to generate them anew every single time, which takes time and wastes tokens. We'll be using a CSV file for storage to get started, which is basically a simple text file with comma separated values or CSV. Before we get there though, let's create a new file in our base tutorial directory named fc quote embeddings.py. Go ahead and close this terminal window. Make it a bit smaller. Now open the file and add the following imports and set up to get started. Most of these are familiar. We import and set up the OpenAI module with our key and import our quotes we saved to a Python list earlier on. We also import the pandas module. We won't go too deep into pandas, but we'll briefly cover the functions we use. So if you're not familiar with pandas, no worries. Pandas is basically a spreadsheet table in Python. It allows us to easily create, read, update and delete data in a spreadsheet slash table like format with rows and columns of data. Note, you may need to run pip install pandas in your console if you don't have pandas installed yet. Finally, we set two global variables to keep track of the total tokens used and the total embeddings generated, so we can give ourselves a sort of progress indicator as we run the file later on. Now we'll define a function that takes a quote as argument and makes a single embedding API call, returning the response. The function takes a quote as argument and the second line gives us access to the global variables, total tokens used and total embeddings, which we defined up here. So we'll not be using a local variable, but we'll actually be updating these two outside of the function here. We'll be running this function over and over and we can increment these variables with every pass. We then make the API call just like we did before and we get the tokens used from the response data. It's actually inside the object. It doesn't just give us the massive embedding, but also how many tokens we used. So we add the total number of tokens used with the tokens used in this call, updating the global variable. We set the total embeddings plus one. And then if the total embeddings remainder 10 equals zero, so if the total number of embeddings is 10 or 20 or 30 or 40, but not any number in between, so this will only trigger once every 10 runs of this function, then we'll print and we'll just print generated, generated total embeddings, so how many gener embeddings we generated so far, with a total of this many tokens used, and then we just divide the number of embeddings by the length of the quotes list times 100 to just get the percentage we're done. Because this will take a while, it's nice to have a progress message every once in a while while we generate loads of embeddings so we can just see it's still working and how long it's still going to take. Then this, remember this function just generates a sim single embedding. So it just responds the data zero embedding, which has all the numbers of the embedding in it. Now we'll need some kind of data structure to hold our data. Below and outside the function block continue. Now, a data frame is pandas signature data structure and PD just stands for pandas. All this is, is an empty table with three columns, quote, author and embedding that we can use to store our data in. And we save this under the variable name embedding data frame. So it is just an empty table or Excel sheet, if you will, with just three columns, quote, author embedding. That's all it is. Now we'll need to loop over a list of quotes and call the above get quote embedding function once for every single quote and then store the data in our data frame. 
So we'll continue here. For each index and quote in the enumerate quotes, so this is the same as saying for quote in quotes, but we also get access to the index, which is going to be helpful in a moment. First, we need, uh, we need to store the quote, the author and the embedding. So we need to get these three parts, pieces of information and then store them. So we get the current quote, which is simply the quote zero. Remember, we have the zeroth index is the quote. The first index is whatever extra information is available. Then we try to get the current author from quote index one. But if there is no index one, maybe this list item only had a quote with no author information, then we just set the current author to unknown. Then we only need the embedding which is get quote embedding with our current quote passed in, just running the function we already defined above. And then we, in the embedding data frame, use the dot .log method, which just allows us to select a specific index, which is why we also got this index here to loop over. We just select a specific index or a specific row inside the data frame. So this will loop to a new row every single time and we'll insert the current quote in the quote column, the current author in the author column and the embedding in the embedding column. Then we'll go to the next loop and we'll go to the next row and insert the next quotes data again until the whole data frame is filled up. Note that certain code like current quote equals quote zero is not technically required, but if you code in this style, it's much easier to read. And if you come back to your code later on, you'll be able to jump right back in. Writing your code as human readable as possible is always preferable over clever one-liners that are harder to read. You could have embedding df.log index equals quote index zero, quote index one, and then embedding, but that's just harder to read. And if you come back to this later, you can just say, oh, this is the current quote, this is the current author, and then this is the embedding. So now that we've filled up our data frame with data, Let's save the data frame to a CSV file, a comma separated file, so we can load it later on. Then we'll print a success message to finish up. So embedding data frame to CSV, which is just a pandas provided method. We're going to call the file fx embedding database dot CSV and we're going to set index to false because pandas actually generates another index or id for us 0 1 2 3 4 5 for every single row but we don't need this extra information so we can just set it to false then we're going to print this success message which just has generated total number of embeddings because we were keeping track of the total number of embeddings in these two global variables with a total of this many tokens used don't worry it really won't cost even a single cent it won't cost even that and then we successfully saved embeddings to the embeddings database printing the data frame head and dot head is just another pandas function which will print this number of rows starting from the top. So this will just print the first five rows of our data frame. So our whole file looks like this. We have our imports, our global variables, our function to get a single quote embedding, our embedding data frame initialization, then we loop over every single index and quote and fill up the data frame with all our data. And remember every 10 quotes, this print statement is going to trigger in our function using the global variable and it will print our progress. Then we save the data frame to CSV and we print a final success message. So let's go ahead and run this. And it should start, yes, we have the first 10 done and we have the first 20 done. And don't worry, this will cost you like 
$0.01 as the current price for ADA V2 tokens is like 0 $0.001 per thousand tokens. So just make sure you let it run to 100%. And then we'll, I'll be back in a moment. I'll just pause this. Okay, so it's done running, generated 256 embeddings with a total of 4506 tokens used, done, and now it's printing the data frame head. And this won't look great in the terminal, and actually my screen is even smaller because I'm trying to keep this readable on smaller like phone screens and whatever. But we have the quote. And then we have this middle column, which is the author and has actually been abbreviated with dots because it doesn't have enough space to show in the terminal window. And then we have the embedding. The title has wrapped around, but this is the third column with the embeddings. So we simply have these three columns, quote, author, which is hidden here, and then the embedding. That's our data frame. You'll now also have a large CSV file named fx embedding database.csv in your base directory, which contains the column names and then their values. So it is quote and then a quote as the author, Confucius in this case, and then the embedding, which is very, very long. So it takes quite a while, but eventually We'll get to the second quote. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, here it is. Happiness is a gift and a trick is not to expect it. And again, it has the author and then it has the next embedding, which is huge. So we can use this as a simple embeddings database and we can just load these embeddings again later. So we don't have to generate them again. We only had to do this generating part once and now we're done. So let's have some fun go ahead and close up this file this was just for generating the embeddings and we'll create a new file in our base directory this time it's going to be called fd find nearest quotes dot by in which we'll make a simple console utility to look for similar quotes to whatever text we type in Okay, so let's start with our imports again. And if you try to run this file later and it complains you're missing anything, just do a pip install and then numpy or sklearn, whatever it may complain about missing. It could be a package that's not even specifically specified in here, like sklearn. Just pip install whatever it says you need and you'll be good to go. Now we import OpenAI and set the key using the couple config as we've done a million times before. We also import pandas again. You saw it in the last tutorial with the table data structure. And we set the embedding module model to the same one we used before because we need the ADA model. The NumPy import is a library for working with arrays and matrices. And it will allow us to efficiently load our embeddings from the CSV file we loaded we saved earlier on. NumPy has its own arrays for working with numbers, which are more memory and CPU efficient, but of course also more limited than Python's built-in lists. We also import the cosine similarity function from openai.embeddingsutils, as cosine similarity is how we compare the similarity between two embeddings. Now define a simple get embedding function again, as we need to get one more embedding for the user input so we can compare it to the embeddings in the database. So we simply take quote, we run the embedding.create call, passing in the embedding model and the quote, and we return only the embedding from the response. Now we're going to load our stored embeddings from the CSV file. The first line is pandas.readcsv method for loading our CSV files for us. And we're just going to pass in the fx embedding db, which is right here. 
we'll catch it in a variable we call df, which is of course of type data frame, the pandas data structure. Then we select the data frame embedding column. And the problem with this is the CSV file has saved everything as a text format. So we don't actually have lists or arrays with our embeddings in this column, but just huge strings with this stuff in string format. So we need to run df.embedding.apply. Embedding is just selecting the embedding column and apply is a method from the pandas uh, library that will apply whatever function we provide on every single row in this column so every single item will have this function applied to it in this case we evaluate the row so we turn the string back into a python list then we run another apply, which will get called again on every single value in every single row in this column. And then we run numpy np.ray, turning this Python list into a numpy array, because again, numpy is more efficient for working with arrays with huge amounts of numbers. And this will make our comparison in a moment much, much quicker. Now let's define a function to compare the similarity between a user input string and our quotes in the database. The function takes a user input string and an optional number of results desired argument which will default to 5 if it's not provided. First we get an embedding for the user input so we can compare against the other embeddings to find similar results. We then declare a new column in our data frame by simply stating data frame, the similarity column, which does not yet exist, but we can just select it anyway and it will be created. And then we're going to define what we want inside this new data frame similarity column. Now this part may look slightly confusing. But we set the value of this data frame similarity column to be the same value as the data frame dot embedding column after a function has been applied to it. So we're basically copying embedding to similarity, but only after this embedding column has been run through this function. Because again, apply will run for every single value in every single row of this entire column. So for every single row, it will take the embedding in the embeddings column and then it will run this one line function, which takes the embedding in this particular row and then runs cosine similarity, which is the comparison function for embeddings. Comparing this embedding in the particular row with the user embedding we got here. So whatever text the user inputs gets compared against the quote in this particular row of the database. So this will return a number which represents the similarity. And this number will then get saved in the similarity column. So running this for every single uh, embedding in our database will add a similarity column and every single quote will then have a similarity to whatever the user typed in. After this, we use the dot sort values pandas method to sort the data frame by this new similarity column. So we're sorting by similarity. Ascending is false because you want the highest values first, not the lowest numbers first. Then we use the dot head function, which again only selects the first x rows of this data frame. So we want the dot head for number of results, which is going to default to dot head five. But if the number of results we desire is 10, then it's going to get the head 10 results. Then for i in range of the number of results, so in this case for every single number in one, two, three, four, five, it's going to print the number 
i plus one because it will default to zero one two three four instead of one two three four five then we're going to get result dot i lock which is the index locator function so this will just select the first row and the first item quote then we get the author and then we get the similarity so as this is going to be a command line utility we'll we'll also return the result but the main functionality will be just this printing to the console of our result and we're almost done i promise now we'll just need to write the part that will ask the user for input and we try something and we accept on keyboard in interrupt which allows us to exit this command line utility with control.c later on so we try while true which is an infinite loop so it will never quit but we have this keyboard interrupt option so that's okay we print welcome to the quote finder please enter a quote to find similar quotes then we have user quote equals input enter a quote or press ctrl c to exit so we're telling the user they can keyboard interrupt this utility and then the result will equal find similar quotes for the user quote which will actually print the result to the console so we don't actually have to do anything here so a basic overview of our file we have imports then we have our basic setup a function to get a single embedding and return it then we read our csv file and evaluate the arrays we have our function which will print the five most similar results and then we have our basic code to get the user input so let's try actually running this and we should get our utility and it should ask us yes enter a quote or press ctrl c to exit i'm going to search for the meaning of life is happiness and service and we get five quote results the meaning of life is to find your gift the purpose of life is to give it away so we can see that this is actually very similar and the similarity scores go down for each result because that's how we sorted them so the first result is very similar and the fifth result is also still quite similar in meaning but it's slightly further away and let's actually try another one i'll search for do not fear making mistakes and we should have maybe put a new line character in the utility that's a nice thing for you to add maybe but we'll look at the results and the interesting thing you can see here these are very good and similar results but if we look for example you may be disappointed if you fail but you're doomed if you don't try the word mistake is never in the whole quote and this one don't let the fear of losing the greater be greater than the excitement of winning also never has the word mistake equally some of these quotes don't have the word fear in them and my whole point is that this is searching by similarity and not by word match which is why this is so powerful because these results are very similar in meaning but they're not limited to just matching the words and that is the power of embeddings and searching by similarity of meaning so let's test the final and important functionality of our utility pressing ctrl c to exit and yes that works as well now in this tutorial we have our data frame in with all our data stored in memory and this is fine for our project as our csv database is only about 8 megabytes in size so it's no big deal but if you're working with a very large project which is far beyond the scope of this tutorial you'll want to consider using a specialized vector database for more efficient storage and similarity search now that's it for part six and in the final part of this tutorial series we'll be looking at another potential use for embeddings 
which is to analyze certain characteristics and sentiment of text using purely embeddings without ever training a machine learning model on training data. I'll see you in the next part. <laughs>